A conspiracy theory, a convicted attempted murderer, and a combative press conference. As Katie Simpson just told us, the backlash from Jaspal Atwal's invitation to private events with Justin Trudeau in India has gone sort of from bad to worse. Here's a little bit more from Ralph Goodale earlier today. A public official, uh, when, they, when they engage in providing information, offering advice, presenting information, is motivated by one thing only, and that is serving the public interest of but Canada. But at this the point, Prime it looks Minister's like he's serving Office facilitated that conversation with journalists I, that day. I have uh, no knowledge of that whatsoever. Are you I'm saying you, that the MP there. is part of the rule? Okay, fair to say that federal budget was just a couple of days ago, maybe a little bit eclipsed by this. For thoughts on what we're calling the Atwal affair, turning to at issue for the second time this week, really the third, actually, if you think about it. Uh, if you did want their analysis on the federal budget, that was Tuesday night. You can find it on the podcast. For now, we're going to talk about all this. Andrew Coyne is in Toronto tonight. Chantal Hébert is in Montreal. And Althea Raj is with me in Ottawa. I'm not complaining to have you this often, I, I just for the record. I like it. Um, OK, let's start with you, Andrew. Is this now at the point where it seems like the government doesn't quite know how to manage this or uh, shut it down? Because it does seem to just keep going no. and, I, and I'm not sure how they stop it. It's more than that. It's they keep making it worse. This story has gone through several stages from the initial embarrassment of the of the tour itself uh, to this catastrophic error, if that it was what it was, of inviting uh, this accused, a uh, convicted attempted murderer to the Prime Minister's dinner, uh, to the uh, embroiling of India in this and making uh, India uh, get quite out of, the nose out of joint as a result mm -hmm. of this, of this strange, you know, midnight briefing from a a senior civil servant, uh, but now what we're seeing is is this kind of comic business where they cannot get their story straight. They can't decide who to blame. Yeah. They they refuse to take accountability where it belongs, which is in the prime minister's office. And we're now getting into things where where uh, having having propped up this civil servant to give the secret briefing to journalists, they're now in this ridiculous position of saying, but he can't give the same briefing uh, to MPs. They have no good answer for for that, which is why Mr. Goodell looked so pathetic today. Chantal, it, it is strange because, uh, you know, it, it is the Liberal MP's fault for inviting Atwal and then the senior official briefing reporter says that it might be a conspiracy between in factions of the Indian intelligence agencies. Like, can it be both of those things? Is it one of those things? Is this story just spinning out of control? It might, but if you're looking at communications management, uh, you see two things. One, uh, dual messaging tracks that uh, run into each other. Mm -hmm. It's the MP made an invitation that he now regrets. Meanwhile, in Ottawa, the PMO offers up a senior uh, official to brief journalists. Yep. It's not that someone dug him out uh, of some hiding hole and then the senior <laughs> official said things. He was put on offer mm -hmm. by the PMO, which to me translates into it was Panic City last week when this story broke and uh, a, a bad good idea was implemented. How you dig yourself out of this? I don't think you can. You can only hope that time will will make this go away. Uh, uh, but at some cost, I think, to the senior government official who uh, got himself embroiled in this. He, he, he's an adult. He went and did this briefing, said what he said, uh, and uh, will probably pay a price for that. And, and Ward Alcock, who used to be the head of CSIS, was on Power and Politics earlier today and said shouldn't have been done. Uh, this senior official should not have done this uh, because it talked about things that probably shouldn't have talked about, Althea. Well, the senior official, the national security advisor, is a man with a very long history in this town and knows how the bureaucracy works and how to serve one's political master. He was a former deputy minister of foreign affairs. So it's not like um, it's a mid-level uh, government official here. Mm -hmm. Like This is somebody who basically knows what they're doing. To me, the question is, why is the government of Canada looking to pick a fight with the government of India even more so knowing that the government of India was concerned and remains concerned that there are elements within the Trudeau government uh, that are sympathetic to uh, Sikh nationalism. Um, it's one thing to say, oh, oops, we're sorry, we really shouldn't have invited Mr. Mm -hmm. Atwal to come to one or actually two of our events in India. But it's quite another thing to say, well, India, you're partly to blame for this because you either took him off the blacklist or you gave him a visa knowing full well where he was going. So yes, while we were incompetent, you also enabled our incompetency by uh, allowing this to happen. 
so the whole purpose of the trip, we are told, was to sort of smooth relationships with India. And then you go out and you decide to uh, let your national security advisor say that to the reporters covering the trip. It, it does not make a lot of Which sense. Which is highly improper, first of all, to be dragging in a civil servant to do basically political spin. The reason they did it was that he'd be believed. If it was just a regular spin mm -hmm. person, we all, none of the reporters would have picked up the story. So that's highly improper. It's highly improper for them to claim that responsibility for this lies anywhere except the prime minister's office. Even if that MP was the person who invited him, and I'm not sure we should take that at face value, but even if he was the person who invited him, responsibility for vetting that is in the prime minister's office. That is regular practice. They seem to have That's waved good. off any security uh, concerns on this. And when you put all this together with this long history that, that, that not just the Liberal Party, but particularly the Liberal Party has of dallying with, winking at, tolerating, uh, Sikh separatism, Le never mind this, the terrorist angle, yeah. but this, the separatist thing. If you want to have good relations with India, with any country, you cannot be dallying with people who want to tear that country apart. La last word, yeah. And you certainly don't do that when you're doing it when you're on a, a fence mending tour. It's, it's, there's a lot of questions still to be answered here. Last point, Chantal. And the, the other question is how much of it is based on the, the looking for vote thing? Yeah. Uh, and are there more votes for the government to have for being in trouble by getting uh, India's nose out of joint than the opposite, the Conservatives? No, I, I don't uh, think just that's Just today we do uh, a motion okay, hang on, hang on. to deal with that. Hang on, Chantal, hang on, Chantal, hang on. finish. Okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change topics if I can, because I, I want to get all of you to weigh in on what happened to the block this week. Here's a little bit of uh, how that unfolded. We decide that we leave the caucus of Bloc Québécois for many reasons that we already talk about many times since a year. I can tell you that I have, and we, I'm not alone here. We have the will to settle and to be able to work together, and the door is still open. So the door is still there. She, she's got three left, I think, beside her now. That's Martine Ouellette, for people that don't know her very well. Chantal, let's start with you. I, I, I mean, I don't know how many times I have been warned in this town to never say the block is dead, but goodness knows, I'm not sure what happens next. Um, I, I don't think anybody knows. It's unprecedented for a party leader to lose the confidence of caucus, because that is what it is when you lose seven, seven out of ten, and to say... I'm going to face, uh, because that's the line, a confidence vote in the spring of 2019. <laughs> uh, Stockwell, they lost a lot less MPs uh, yes. in a similar crisis and put this leadership on the line in a leadership contest and lost it, but still uh, felt that this position was untenable. It, this is happening at the worst possible time for a Quebec sovereignty movement on the eve of a Quebec election. And it is a fight in Ottawa between hardliners Pro uh, for sovereignty and others that is extending into the entire sovereignist family. So it's not just the bloc uh, that is going down. There's a split here. Uh, there will be a battle in Montreal soon against uh, Jean Francois Lisée's star candidate mm -hmm. and someone from the same Martin Ouellet family. So this is a, a, a schism uh, that stands to cost the PQ in the next election in Quebec. Althea. Martin Wallet likes to say that she was elected by the members, which is not true. She was acclaimed. One thing that's a little bit sad, frankly, is that the Bloc in Ottawa has always been this party that represents the views of basically the National Assembly, especially when there was a consensus at the National Assembly in Ottawa. They're no, they were known uh, to do very good parliamentary work. They were mm -hmm. ardent defenders of French language rights across the country. And Martin Wallet's leadership style, which is one of the key things that the MPs came out and said that they they don't like. They don't like her um, sort of directional tone telling them what to do and the fact that she doesn't listen. Uh, but also that her main focus is just sovereignty first and not basically representing the voice of Quebecers yes. in the House of Commons. Yeah. And uh, this is a giant opening to the rest of the political parties and surprisingly actually the Liberal Party which is looking at Quebec uh, to maintain a majority government in 2019 because surprisingly um, Quebecers don't seem to like the other parties, even though they don't seem to like Justin Trudeau either. Yeah, uh, I, I, yeah, I, mean. I was looking at Eric Grenier's analysis of that today, and that also surprised me that they those those same voters would turn first towards Justin Trudeau, not because, as you say, they love him so much, because they, but they're really not attracted to Jagmeet Singh for all the reasons that we talked about during the leadership race and and to the Conservatives. And the Minister Home. Yeah, that's true, Andrew. I think what you have here is the intersection of two things. One is the decline and weakness of the bloc 
when you, when you are in a weak position, things feed on themselves. And the divisions which you might paper over if you had the wind behind you uh, suddenly become insurmountable and you have these kind of, of existential schisms. Uh, so that's one part. The other part, of course, is this cockamamie way we have in this country of choosing party leaders. Uh, yeah. So it does give Martine Ouellette, even if she was acclaimed, it gives her this out of saying, well, I'm not responsible uh, to the caucus because they didn't choose me. Uh, so even when you have this situation where 70% of the caucus finds your leadership repellent, somehow they have to go rather than the leader. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, we keep seeing these, these eruptions. We saw this yeah. with the Patrick Brown situation yeah. in Ontario, mm -hmm. uh, where, uh, and we've got to fix this. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all. Appreciate it.